So we went, we ended the last video with unwrapping uh, these flower petals. What I did was I unwrapped them a second time, or I re-unwrapped them, making them all more uniform and rotating each petal as I went along. So what I did was I made sure that my flower was in top view. And I was cammed in to where I could see them all nice and neat. Whoops, I scrolled in a little bit there. So I cammed in where I could see them all nice and neat. When I did each one um, project from view like this, they all came out about the same size because project from view in the unwrap menu does it exactly from view. So if you're farther away, it's going to be a smaller unwrapping. If you're closer, it's going to be a bigger one. <clears throat> and so instead of trying to size them all up by hand to be about the same size, if you just keep your camera completely still, if you can, doing each one like this on its own is going to give you about the same size um, petals. So it kind of saves a step on resizing them in the UV image editor. When I re-unwrapped all of them, I then went into object mode. I connected, or I selected all six petals. I used Control J, and I joined them into one. And that's why now when I have it selected, all of them are actually being um, in, put into edit mode at the same time. I'm going to go ahead and show you something that was pointed out to me. My flower top, although it's really cute and everything, it's kind of small. It doesn't look small when we're next to the first set of leaves and because we're close up on it, so we really can't tell the scale or the size of it, right? But if we pull back, we can see that that's a teeny tiny little bitty flower top on the top of their very big stem. and you can see that it's even smaller <laughs> than the leaves. So what we're going to want to do is scale this up. I wanted to join them before I scaled them so they'd all scale up nice and even. So I'm going to hit um, S and I'm going to hit scale up. Also, let's pick our little um, bud piece in here as well. I'm going to make sure that my Pivot point is set to median. I'm going to actually take the origin for this one instead of having it here. I'm going to open up my tool shelf because when you join them, each one of them had their own origin. So when you join them, the last one that you selected is the origin that they're all going to have. So let's go ahead and go to set origin and choose origin to geometry. And it will put it in the middle of all this geometry. There we go. So now that I select this one, uh, these two have different origins. Let's go ahead and control J and join these as well. That's not a big deal. Okay, so we'll just reduce enter origin to geometry real quick. Moved it moved it um, slightly. So we're going to hit S for scale. Maybe something like that is more like what we want. The stem <clears throat> seems a little bit tiny now compared to what we had. So let's also, well, I don't know what we should do here. Looks a little silly. Let's go ahead and fatten this up just a tiny bit up here. Let's just scroll our selection. There we go. Makes it easier. And now we can scale this up as well. Except from the Z, we don't need to scale it on the Z axis. <clears throat> so S, Shift, Z, and scale it up and up. 
bring it down a little bit. And let's scale it up a little bit more. Now let's scale it on Z a little bit. There we go. All right, so this is fitting that a little bit better. All right, I'm liking that. Let's go ahead and take this edge loop and scale it out a little bit. I might be a little too fat right there. I don't know, it looks a little too uniform in size if you ask me, so let's go into wireframe so I can select the bottom edge loop here, out of wireframe, and scale it up. We're not going to worry about the leaves getting pushed, or it looks like they're getting pushed into the... Looks like a little tree trunk, maybe. I don't know if that's too thick. Let's just experiment a little bit more. Nothing wrong with playing with your piece as you go along. I think that looks a little bit better now that I made the flower even bigger still. Okay, so now we have to go back to this. And let me just... I want to get the inside one, so let's go back into Z for wireframe. And those are the ones that I want to select. Okay, and let's scale these up a little bit. Take this one down, scale it in a little, mm -hmm. <coughs> wireframe again, I'm going to border select the top, out of wireframe, and just bring this down a little, let's deselect this, oops, Let's deselect this one and scale this in a little bit more on the X and Y only, so S, Shift, Z. And that looks a lot better, I think. It's our flower. It can look any way we want it to. It's a little odd sometimes when you're first making them, you run into these little tiny issues. Like I said, though, you never really realize sometimes, I don't want to say never, but sometimes you don't realize what you're working with if you don't stop for a few minutes and um, cam back and see what you've got going on. So what I'm doing is I'm just pulling the leaves out a little bit because I had um, made the stem bigger here, so the ends of the leaves went in. This one isn't too bad. It looks pretty good, actually. Pull it out a tiny bit. Okay, so there's our first flower. It's all unwrapped. And all we need to do is to uh, put the unwrapping all together in the UV image editor so that it is texturable. I'm going to show you how to make a, some foliage real quick as well. A really quick and simple way of doing it. And actually it's a way that you'll see all over SL Grid and it's something that you'll see even in a lot of the video games that are out there. I had to take a sip of my coffee. It's very, very, very early in the morning for me. Okay, so uh, this is all selected. It's going to edit mode. Select it all. Remember, what's in your UV editor 
uh, nothing shows up in here that isn't um, actually unwrapped and selected. So this is a really lame little <laughs> uh, texture. What I did was I went onto the um, internet and I found a few samples of actual flower petals. So I have my file browser open and I'm just going to pull um, uh, two samples over. So here's one sample. And it's just a purple uh, floral petal. <clears throat> it's not um, it's not the same shape, but we're not going to worry about that. I'm going to take this little piece here and I'm going to just drag it down to the bottom. We don't need that in the way just yet. I'm then going to take all of these and kind of line them up. So <clears throat> if I use my B for border, oops, I hit N. So if I take B for border and I'm going to grab it. Oh, I got this one selected as well. So let me just deselect that. Put this up here. Um, I can just get it really close and be careful not to deselect any of it. So it's selected. I'm going to cam in. And now I can hit G with my arrow keys. I can move this where I want to. And that is kind of close. There we go. I'm going to deselect everything. Use B. Select this one. Um, now, you're not going to run into this problem if you unwrap um, it before you make the copies. If you unwrap this first and then make the duplicates of them, all of them are going to come lined up perfect and matching perfectly. Uh, this was a little bit of a mistake I made not unwrapping that one petal first. And just like many other things we do when we make mistakes, we have to find workarounds for it. So hopefully me working around it, my mistake, kind of like this, will give you ideas in case uh, you ever make a mistake on it. You can fix it and, whoops, I didn't want to have this one down here selected. So let me go back. Whoops, huh? Two whoopsies in the same five seconds is not good. Um, let me go ahead and put this one right here. Deselect everything. Um, border, select this one and grab it and put it there. Okay, so they're all basically really close to each other. I can now border select all of them. And I can grab them and rotate them and scale them. And I'm probably going to want to try and stay within, of course, the purple boundary or the edge of the um, petal here. Just working it a little bit. Maybe scale it. tiny bit more. Okay, now in order to see the actual results of this unwrapping texturing onto our petal, we can go to our viewport shading <coughs> menu and choose textured. And there we go. That's how it looks. Let me go into object mode. That's how our flower looks. That is not so bad. That is kind of cute. I like it. The reason that the inside here is invisible is because if you notice, it's invisible right here. We can make this any color we want to. <clears throat> so I'm going to, let me deselect this. So it's not showing up in there. Those are the petals. So let's go ahead and just um, <clears throat> add a material to these. So in the materials tab, we're going to hit the new. We'll call this 
flower petal. Oh, I spelled that wrong, of course. What is a video with me not typoing something, right? Come on, let me pull this open. It's easier to fix my mistakes when I can see the whole thing. There we go. After you make a material for it, you don't have to give it colors. The reason we give it colors is usually we're working on untextured items and the color variation lets us see the different materials in the editor here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit assign. Always hit assign. When you make your material, always assign it to where you want it to be. And the uh, place that you're going to have it does need to have it, um, it does need to be selected. Okay? So now I can come here and I can choose this new um, take this, all of it, and I'm going to grab it. What if we put it like right here? Overall light. It might be kind of nice. It's got color picked up from here, only it doesn't look as veiny or as streaked as the petals do, so that's pretty good. We'll go ahead and we'll give this its own material as well. So back into edit mode, it's selected, plus button, new, and we'll just call this the little bulb and hit assign. Now, what we have here is, you know that this is covering the same place as these are, right? So, um, that doesn't matter. If they're overlapping here, it doesn't matter at all. The only time it matters is if you're going to try and bring in one texture to cover both of these. Um, then you usually want them to each have their own texture space but we're using the same texture space for it on this actual image, so this is good. We're going to go ahead and grab the leaves, one of the leaves, and actually, let me go out of textures for a second here, just solid. So I'm going to select all the leaves, and because I unwrapped the leaves first, when I do Control J, go into edit mode, have them all selected, you see that they're already lined up. And that's what I was talking about. That's why we should have, or I should have, unwrapped the flower petals first, because now they're all in the same place. So I've found another texture for leaves. So let me bring this in. And this will also show you what I was talking about, the veins on leaves, they go in different directions. So this is actually coming out towards us, the veining, and this veining is going away from us. So this is the top of the leaf and the bottom. If I'm not mistaken, let me go ahead and let me select some of the top of this leaf geometry. Oops. So the top one is this one up here. So when I select all again, I know that this is the top leaf. Sometimes you just want to make sure of things. After you've been working on a project and you walk away from it, it's easy to forget which was the top or the bottom. I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to grab it. And here. And these are about the same size, but not to the point where we have to scale these together. So I'm going to scale this up. I'm going to scale it on the y-axis. Scale it up again. I'm going to grab this. Just move it over a tiny bit. I can even take just these vertices. I can grab them and bring them
right there. I can take this section of them and I can scale them out on the X if I wanted to just so they get a little more texture in them. You don't want to distort this too much but you know sometimes having uh, a nice texture you want to kind of make it fit a little bit. I think we'll stop and keep that right there. So let me go ahead and border select the top, the other leaf, the bottom. We're going to rotate this one as well. Grab it. Oops, grab it. Scale it. Scale it on the Y. I'm just going to mess with these a little bit because I like that green vein here. So we're just going to try and incorporate a little bit more of it into our texture. Let me scale these out on the X. Deselect this one. Scale on the X. Deselect this one. Oops. Scale this one on the X a little bit as well. <coughs> we could even do this one a little. Scale on the X. Okay. So now with that done, those are the leaves. Let's go into textured shading, object mode, and there we have our leaves. And those are not so bad. Those are pretty cool. They're looking good. So the stem, <coughs> the stem is harder to find a texture for. But let me show you what I did find. Let me go back into solid. Let me go into edit mode on the stem and select it all. Okay, and there it is. Alright, I wish I could have found a better texture than I did. But let me show you what I did find. This is just to show you how to get a little creative. So this is a picture of floral tape. This is what people use to wrap fake flowers with or dried flowers with or fix real life plants um, that may be broken or something. Uh, just floral tape. So I thought the texture on this was actually kind of nice to use. It's got a bit of a gradient in there, a little lighter in the middle, darker at the top and the bottom which is really the way a lot of plant stems are. It's not a solid color. So I'm going to take these here. Remember, our top is this one right here, up at this side. So I'm going to just grab this all. And again, like I said, this is just to kind of show you how creative you can be with some. If you can't find a flower stem to get a picture from, uh, think outside the box and try to find something. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate this like that. No, it's not even yet, but that's okay because this isn't straight either. So we'll probably end up turning it a little bit anyways. I'm going to scale this down and grab it. And that is pretty darn good for lining up with a silly little piece of tape. So I'm going to grab um, the end here and I'm going to scale it on the Y and I'm going to grab it and push it. Right, I didn't want to pull it sideways. I just want to grab it and push it straight up. And just grab and push this one up a little. Might have to scale this in on the 
fly a little bit as well. This one looks okay, but you see right here, it's too close to the edges. So let's go ahead and scale this one a little as well and grab it and nudge it up. Or I might as well just do this to all of them. I guess I should have scaled it a little more on the Y before I started. Okay, grab. I really like these. I like these colors of green. Okay, so now the stem is done. Let's go back into um, texture. And there is our flower. Let me select the petals or the leaves, the stem, the flowers. Let me go into ice. There we go. Without the pot in there. And there is our cute little flower. Not so bad. The green on the stem is close to the green on the leaves. It's a little bit darker. We could always darken the leaves up and gimp a little bit uh, but this is how you would get um, it actually textured inside a blender so now when you export this and you bring this into second life and you take your tape texture just exactly as it is don't change it except if you want to change color or something drag and drop it onto your stem do the same with the leaves drag the texture right on there and the same with these pieces and they will be textured exactly like they are here. Again, this isn't the perfect um, <laughs> texture for that, but hey, you know, we make do with what we can while we're experimenting. I did want to show you that I found another uh, flower texture just to show you how you can leave the unwrapping um, or you can uh, change the whole look of it by just changing your um, texture. So here's another flower. And this one I thought look, might look kind of nice too. So if I I'll leave that there for now. I kind of like it a little bit darker. Don't you? Let me hit um, L for island on this one. Let me grab it and push it up here. Yeah, I kind of like it like that. Now you're going to say, why is that stretched out? When the image that you bring in is more rectangle in a sideways way or height way than what you are working with a square image, it will actually stretch out the UVs. Normally just re-unwrapping them makes it all work out fine, but I'm actually not going to go through that. I would go through that if I was going to... Um, actually use this image but right now we're just using it for an example so I'm going to rotate this and scale it scale on the Y rotate it scale it down grab it okay anyhow so you can see really simple to actually throw it a uh, to manipulate the UVs to take another texture. When you change these UVs, so like when I had it for the purple leaves, when I took it out of here, um, that unwrapping will stay with it. If you re-unwrap it like we did for this pink flower, then you would actually need to re-export the actual mesh because the unwrapping that it has here when you export it is the one it has in Second Life and in Second Life you can never change that unwrapping you can only change the image so if we wanted to in Second Life have the same flower with two different petals on it what you would do is you would take the other one you would take one of these into GIMP or Photoshop and you would just rotate it and change the actual image to match the UVs so that brings another question about, well, how do you know what the UVs look like? How can you move, 
and manipulate an image to match them. Well, when you're in edit mode and you have everything selected, one of our buttons down here, the UVs button, is for all the things that we can do with the UV. So if we click on that, we see the top choice here is export UV layout. And it will actually save this as a PNG that you can pull into your graphics editor program and you can um, uh, color in it, almost use it like coloring book outline, you can color in it. So if I come out of my isolated mode, the two parts that we don't have done yet are the, uh, the dirt and the pottery. Uh, so let's go ahead and remember we gave the dirt its own texture, right? Or its own material. So let's deselect everything here. I'm going to come here and select the dirt and choose this select button. Since this is a face or a material, we can select it. And now only the part that has that material is up there. And you can see the same in the window. So I would probably just take some kind of a dark brown texture. And this one is actually a leather texture. And the reason I'm doing this leather texture is because I want to show you. Remember I said that sometimes we can use the outside of our um, texture area here for our for our um, for our use or whatever. Um, this texture area is the only one that shows <coughs> the actual texture in it. But in the background, this texture is being tiled over and over again endlessly. Um, so if we were to take this and let's say stretch it, so let's hit S and scale. The bigger I make this, the more texture space it covers. The more texture gets squished into this area. So let me go ahead and S and scale. You can see as I scale that leather texture or scale the UVs up, it is decreasing or making more repeats of that. And so now we actually have something that looks a little not like dirt. <laughs> But we're getting a texture there. And if you put a dirt texture on this face inside of Second Life, if it's seamless, it's going to be repeated over and over again, just like it is in here. But um, if you drop a texture on here in Second Life, you don't really have to scale this up. This is just one face to the material. So you can change your repeats in the actual um, SL editing window. So this can actually go back like this here. Since it's its own material, you can change the repeats to look the other way inside a second life. Um, as far as the pottery goes, I'm going to go ahead and deselect this. Select the pottery again. Select in that window and select it all here. And I found a, a semi-seamless pottery image I'm just going to bring in. And it is white. Again, because this is its own material, you can make these repeats change inside a second life. Or you can have it just as it is like that. You can see that's not seamless too perfectly there. Like I said, I thought it was getting close to seamless. Let's see what this looks like if we scale it up a little bit. So I'm going to deselect this portion. And then scale this one up. That's actually pretty cool like that. You could also take this image here, since it's white, and give it color inside of GIMP or Photoshop or whatever. You could probably even tint it a little bit with the SL colors, but SL colors change the color of everything. If you use blending modes inside of uh, your graphics program, then you're going to maintain 
more of this uh, contrast between the height variations that we're supposed to be uh, seeing here. So you'll see more of that maintained if you use like an overlay mode or a soft light mode or even a burn mode between a color layer and the texture layer. Anyhow, that is how to create a little pottery plant with a little flower in it here inside a blender. So I promised I would show you one more small technique. And also, when you have this here, you can take it and duplicate it. And you can have two little flowers in here. You can make this one a little smaller. You can even um, take it. Well, if we take all of these, let me select all three pieces. And let's join them, right? And now if we go into um, edit mode, they're all in edit. Let me des let me go into wireframe, and I'm going to deselect all of that, and go back into regular view. Regular. Actually, I should deselect. No, I'm gonna. I'm going to see what happens with these, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. So if I look at it like this, and let's say I just rotate it. Yeah, I shouldn't have those on there. So back into wireframe, border, and deselect those. Regular view, I can rotate this a little bit. Like that, so it's not standing straight up. I can even tip it this way a little, move it over. So for the same flower, they have a little bit of a different bend to them. You could even, uh, you know, select the, the petals alone and you can resize those or reshape them a little bit. Alright, so let's go ahead and I'm going to just bring in a flat plane. So shift plus A a plane and look at this plane by default is two meters two meters and so this is really pretty big <laughs> we're gonna want to scale that whole thing down before we bring it into second life so I'm gonna scale this on the Y and this is gonna be just like um, just like our uh, making of the leaves and petals. I'm going to take these two and I'm just going to pull them down a little bit into the dirt. I'm going to use border um, edge loop here and bring this up. I'm going to take these and maybe bring it down a little bit. I'm going to use edge loop again. Bring that one down. Bring that one down. Another one. Bring this up. Another one here. So I can bring this one in. Whoops, I didn't get the second one over there. And you'll see that I'm also only changing them in the X and the Y, or the X and the C direction for now. Alright, I'm going to add a second, um, uh, I'm going to unwrap this, so I'm going to go into top view, select all, U, and just unwrap, and here you can see it. Whoa, let's see, come on. There we go. So here it is, these go sideways though, so I'm going to take this, Actually, I'm not going to change that just yet. Let me scale it, though, a little bit on the X. It doesn't need to be that wide. All right, and then we're going to bring in another texture. So I found this uh, fern leaf. I'm not sure. Well, actually, you know what? Let's not use that one because I thought it was on a PNG. I thought it was one second. 
Okay, so I found another one that is actually on a, an actual transparent background. You see? So I can take this, and also, if you notice, again, this picture is taller than my square texture space was, so it kind of stretched it out. But now I can take this edge, and I can grab it on the X. Grab it, pull it right around there. This one, grab on the X as well. It's backwards. This is the lower side of the plant. So all I'm going to do is select all, rotate it 180 degrees. And there we go. We have like a little fern piece sticking out of our grass. We could also put an edge loop <coughs> this way on it, right? And we can lift it up a little bit to give it that curve that we want. Um, if we look in the end panel, we see our backspace calling is off. So we see this way Blender sees it. And let me show you where that comes in handy. So here, as Blender sees it, we see the underside of this mesh has texture. If we turn backspace calling on, it has no texture. This is the way Second Life sees it, as one-sided mesh. So if it's important to have that underside on there, hit A for all, shift T to duplicate it, and it's still backwards because it's exactly the same as the top, but we can come into our shading UV section, and in the normals area, we can flip direction. And so now as well, we'll see it with texture on the top and on the bottom. Again, depending on how much foliage you have going on, that might not, not be necessary. So, in back in edit mode, in texture view, there we go. We can take this one and we can duplicate it if we want to and rotate it a little. And we can begin to fill up our plant with a few other little um, pieces of foliage and make it a little more lifelike, I guess, a little more um, creative with our things, or be a little more creative with our things. Okay, so guess what? That is it. I'm going to just take it, lift it up off the ground. Maybe we can see a little bit better. And there is how to make a, oh, this is backwards. Do you see that? This one is actually backwards. So in edit mode, let's select this bulb top. And guess what? You might know why or how to fix that already based on how we fixed um, the fern. Just chip coming in here and flipping direction. And if this one was invisible or inverted backwards, and then so is this one because this is a copy of that. So let's go here, select this one, and flip direction as well. That does matter when you get it to Second Life. It looks like they're all, no, they're not. I was going to say, it looks like they're, yeah, they might all be inverted. How odd is that? Okay, so let me, I'm going to take all of these, so select nothing, L, 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 for island select. Let's go to flip direction and look at it. Oh, that looks much better, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, for some reason they are all the wrong way. No biggie. You just come in here and flip direction. So always change, always check your work. Make sure that it is as you want it to be. These look good. Yep. All right. Well, I guess that's it. So have fun, be creative, and let's see you make some plants. Bye, everyone. Please remember to subscribe to the channel, share it, like it. 
um, give me a little feedback if you want to. I always like hearing um, about how people are making progress or if you have any issues or anything like that. Alright, have a good day.